Welcome to Structural Analysis. So let's define some terms and figure out what this course is all about. So a structure is any system of components where members are used to support loads. Structures usually have a purpose. They are made of specific materials and they're going to experience environmental factors like wind and snow and ice. Now the building I have shown here is the, is it still administration building at Texas Tech University? This is a building structure, but structure can mean a drilling rig. It can mean a water reservation, reservoir dam. It can mean a bridge for transportation across a river. Structure is a generalized term for any system supporting loads. The purpose of the structure is generally defined by the client. The materials used are going to be defined by the purpose of the building and somewhat by the client. And lastly, by the architect and the aesthetics required for the purpose of the structure. The environment is defined by the location of the structure. Lastly, there's the loads. The loads are going to be defined by the purpose, the materials, the environment, and this all is information that's contained within codes and standards. Now there are two categories of loads that we use in structural design. There are dead loads. They're going to be the self-weight due to materials. And other permanent materials. I have permanent in quotes here because ice loads and snow loads that last for longer than a week sometimes, it depends on your location, can count as a dead load. Um, a lot of times the actual purpose of the building can count as a dead load. A library will have a dead load for the books, even though that is a shelf and a, a system that can move. We also have live loads. Live loads are going to be loads that don't last for very long, such as weather, with some exceptions, occupancy, traffic, impact, so on and so forth. Essentially, anything that's not a dead load is a live load. Those are our two categories. Let's say, for example, we have a portion of a floor from the third floor of a building and it's constructed from concrete that's four inches deep and supports a suspended ceiling with acoustical fiberboard. So I've got my little crude drawing here. I want to find in the dead load of the floor in pounds per foot. The first thing I'm going to do is come over here to my textbook. Table 1-3 has all of my dead loads on here and I see that I have lightweight concrete and it is eight pounds per square foot and I have my acoustical fiber board that is one pound per square foot. So from table 1.3 I've written down my two values here. Concrete is eight pounds per square foot per inch and fiber board is one pound per square foot. Now it says here that our concrete is four inches deep, so I need to multiply this eight PSF by that four inch depth that we were given. So this is going to give us 32 pounds per square foot. All right, 
So if we have 32 pounds per square foot of concrete and one pound per square foot for fiberboard, that gives us 33 pounds per square foot for load over the floor span. We were also given that our floor span is 20 feet, 20 feet, which is equal to 660 pounds per foot. This time we have an eight foot square slab from a lobby office of a building and it has six inch stone concrete. We want to find the resultant force on the slab. So down here I've got my slab drawn in blue, it's six inches deep and eight foot square. This particular problem also told us this was the lobby of an office building, which tells us there's going to be live loads involved here. Those live loads are going to come from the ASCE 7 design manual. Most of you don't have that design manual laying around and I will provide that uh, portion to you on Blackboard. So looking at our live loads in the ASCE 7 design manual, I can come down here to office buildings and I see here that for lobbies I have a 100 PSF live load. Our dead load is still going to come from table 1.3 in our textbook. So here we are at the same table, but instead of the lightweight concrete like the previous example, we're going to be using the stone concrete, which is a little bit heavier at 12 pounds per square foot per inch depth. With this information, I can calculate the total pounds per square foot load. We will have our 100 PSF for the live load plus 6 inches times 12 PSF per inch and that is going to give us 172 pounds per square foot of load over our slab. It doesn't want the load over the square foot, it wants the resultant force. So the resultant force is going to equal to that load PSF over the area 8 feet by 8 feet, which is equal to 11,008 pounds of force or 11 kilopounds for resultant force.